Hey all you physicists, welcome to the next lesson in the Modern Physics Playlist and today we are talking about fermions versus bosons. Now um, in this lesson I'm going to be explaining to you what fermions are and how they differ from bosons. So what are they exactly? Well um, this picture right here is the standard model of all particles and what um, what the standard mo model consists of is the quarks, which are in purple, the leptons, which are in green, and the bosons, which are in red and yellow. The, and the Higgs boson is kind of by itself because um, it's still a relatively new and um, new boson. Even though we found um, possible, we, we found a possible Higgs boson in the um, Large Hadron Collider at CERN last summer, we still aren't. 100% sure that it is the Higgs boson. So, I'll talk more about the Higgs boson and the um, in another video. So, just for now, I want to talk about the um, what fermions and bosons are. So, all particles, all fundamental particles from the standard model, can be broken up into either fermions or bosons. So, what are they? So, before I get into that, actually, um, I'm just gonna ask you to recall what. We, what I talked about in the last lesson, which is spin. Now we know that spin is an intrinsic property of all of all um, particles. So, for example, in in um in this chart right here, spin is is this one right here. Spin is the third number, and the second number is the charge. Actually, the charge. Okay, so remember what spin was. Spin is an intrinsic property of fundamental particles that can be described as the earth rotating about its own axis but not quite because um, quarks and electrons quarks and leptons don't really have sides to them like the earth does so we can't really say that we can't really say that it spins on its axis but it's something similar to that and for more info just check back on my previous video but anyway let's move on so what is a, bo a fermion first a fermion is any particle that has an um, half integer spin. So the requirement for a firm, the requirement for a fermion is that it needs to have a half integral spin. So for example, it needs to have half or three halves or five halves, etc. Now a boson is any particle that has an integer spin. Or integral spin for example 0 1 2 etc so from this chart we can see that basically this chart we can divide it into two parts I'm using a light blue you can divide it into two parts right here this part right here on the left side are the fermions the fermions and on the right side are the bosons and why because we can check in in the spin we got a half here we got a half here like all the particles on the left side have a have a spin of half, whereas the ones on the right side have a spin of one zero one one one. So, the left side are fermions and the right side are bosons. And why do we need to make this um, distinction between them? Well, the thing is, fermions and bosons um, exhibit different characteristics. Fermions follow what is called the Fermi, F R M I, and that's where fermion got its names from. Um, from the guy called Fermi, Fermi Dirac statistics, and I won't go into detail about this yet. But basically, what this says is that all fermions have to follow the Pauli exclusion principle, which is that no two fermions can be at the exact same location, i.e., exact same quantum number as each other. So that's why we don't fall through the floor because the fermions, the electrons and protons in our in our body, obey Pauli exclusion principle, and that's why we cannot go through materials because they can't be at the exact same location or the exact same quantum numbers. So we we have to, we have to thank the Fermi direct statistics and the Pauli exclusion principle for us not falling through the floor. Bosons, on the other hand, follow what is called the Bose, and there you go. That's why it's called boson because of the guy called Bose. Bose Einstein statistics. And these, in my opinion, bosons are more interesting because 
they can be at the exact same quantum numbers level, all of them, an unlimited amount of bosons can occupy the same space. So that's why um, bosons don't actually occupy space, whereas fermions do occupy space. Everything we see in the world that occupies space is because of fermions obeying the Pauli exclusion principle, whereas bosons are like photons, light, which don't occupy space. That's why we don't get we don't get like hit by photons every single time light passes through us. And that, that's why, um, like, let's say, radio waves can pass through the, the windows to our radio because it doesn't really occupy space, it just goes through everything. So these are, those are the differing characteristics of fermions and bosons and what makes them different. Boson also, bosons also have, has this um, special quality which I like a lot, which is called, they form, at low temperatures, they form what is called a Bose-Einstein condensate and what happens at low temperatures oops at low temperatures is that all these bosons like let's say we have a, we have a glass of bosons right um, what happens is that each of them condensed into one fluid they condense into the exact same spot all these bosons condense into the same exact energy state so basically they flow as one and that's kind of mind-boggling so that all these an unlimited number of bosons can occupy the exact same location. So hopefully you guys can uh, you know appreciate how the how particles in our everyday life are differentiated into fermions and bosons, and how we have to thank Pauli exclusion principle for us not falling through the floor. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.